Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another part of my thing. My thing where I am making a Tetris game analyzer. Last time we solved the mystery of the missing digit. So today we're going to dive right into enhancing our analyzer and move it from a proof of concept to more of a... Well, we'll see how far we get. We'll add some statistics. I really want to add some of the traditional CTWC statistics like um, uh, Tetris rate. That's the big one. Um, I'd love to have a drought counter. That's the number of pieces since you've last got a long bar. And that's important for classic Tetris, and I'll talk about that once we get there. Um, so those are the two big statistics. We're going to inject that into our proof of concept. What's going to happen is our proof of concept is going to expand a bit until we all of a sudden realize our proof of concept is a fully fledged legitimate analyzer. That's and the, the point where it becomes where it crosses the threshold from just a proof of concept to the actual thing is not going to be well defined. Anyhow, we will keep going. So let us, oh, and I say that, uh, and I haven't been recording my screen. <laughs> awesome. Well, good thing I haven't done anything. Uh, let's do this. Continue. There we go. Okay. So that is recording. Let us now open up our project. That is my bank stuff. Never mind that. Let's open up our folder here. Okay, here we go. This is our proof of concept where we analyze. Now the first thing I want to do is to really see if this works with analyzing less frames. This is a simple while true. That means this never ends. And so we try and take the screenshot. And as soon as we're done, we print the score and we go right back up. And we're so we're constantly doing this over and over and over and over and over again as fast as we possibly can. And that's a little possibly unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let's just put a delay in here. So let's make this an async task. That'll be fine. What's the problem there? Well, make it. So this becomes a task and while true, we'll get a screenshot. But then what we'll do is we will wait for a few, I don't know how long, um, number of milliseconds here. We could wait, let's even wait a thousand milliseconds, so a whole second. Let's see if that is going to help us. Because what I was finding uh, when I was watching the last video, which I don't even think is on YouTube at this point, um, I saw that my game feed on the video was choppy at times, and I even missed a sweet T-spin that I got. I was watching the video, waiting for it, and it we lost some frames on the Tetris game. And, and I think that's just because I'm recording the screen for YouTube, plus I'm bringing in the capture card onto that same screen, plus my game analyzer is taking partial screenshots of the same screen and I'm just hoping that that's the reason it was choppy. Um, and so I'm going to try this just because I want to and see if this fixes the choppiness. So we're going to do this. We're going to play a game of Tetris right away. Let's build this. Oh, whoa, does not implement invert. What? 
Hold on. What's the... Oh, ha, <laughs> right. Because I made this uh, a task. Now, what a task is, for those of you who don't know, it's just a task is something that will run on a different thread or even a different CPU than the actual CPU that's executing the, the, the program code. This just helps utilize all of your CPUs. And what's the problem here? It does not have a magic. Oh, right. Well, I have to save it first. Now it's fine. Uh, it's fine because I'll build it and everything will be okay. There we go. Um, but now our issue is in the Tetris Tools project where we What are we doing here? Yeah, right now this is a task, so I have to await this. And this becomes an async task. Just everything is going to be running on different, possibly different CPUs. Okay, save that. We will build it. Okay, I want to see how this works. Uh, okay. Okay, let's let's start our Nintendo. Bring this here. Let's open up PLC. One capture card, there we go. Okay, so let's run this. Run without debugging. And we'll start the game here. So right now it's going to take a screenshot every second. It's not taking any screenshots. Why isn't it taking any screenshots? Still nothing. Wait, what's going on? Oh, finally it, oh, right, because I hadn't hit down yet. Okay, let's, let's try that again. I was like, why isn't it taking screenshots? Well, because my score wasn't changing. Okay, lots of errors there, okay. We'll make my score change by pushing down. So after every time it prints my score, it will wait a second. And I think this is actually okay. This, this is looking fine to me. Just get a Tetris. Okay, this is fine. Waiting a second is fine. And it's a lot less resources on the CPU. And hopefully all my video stuff is, is gonna be uh, playing nicely with it. Okay, so that's it. We're gonna stop that. That's going, that's going by. And you can, See, the errors are happening. Actually, they're happening very fast. Did I not have... Oh, I probably did something wrong. Oops. 
what is it? Shift, Control F12. Yeah, there we go. No, it's delaying. There's, there's no, there's no issue with that. Oh, I see. But if an error happened here, the exception would be thrown before it ever got to this line. So it only waits when an exception didn't happen. And that's fine. But that's the reason why the error was showing faster than once a second. Good. Okay. So that's fine. Now we have to, I want to add some game information. Um, so we're going to need a class, a game, a class which will contain all the information to a specific game. And I'm trying to think where this model will live. I think it's in the game analyzer project, which we might move. No, I think this makes sense though. Okay, so let's make a new folder called models and we'll make a new C plus C sharp class. This will be called a game model. Okay, this is a data model, you know. Mm. So this is a data model uh, that's going to contain information about the currently executing game. So I think what we're going, we're just going to do simple things for now. So there'll be a score. That's fine. Um, there's going to be a lines. Okay, I'm not sure why spaces aren't being put in here. There's going to be Tetrises. Tetris count. Okay, there's going to be... Now... Do I make this an integer? No, let's, uh, well. Because I want this to be Tetris rate. So let's make it a double Tetris rate. And the way we're going to do this, now the Tetris rate is defined as the number of lines, the percentage of lines that you've obtained via the Tetris. So if you've got, if you're, if you have 16 lines and eight of them were gotten with Tetrises, so you have two Tetrises and then eight other lines somewhere, your Tetris rate is 50%. Eight out of the 16 lines is uh, were gotten by Tetrises. And in classic Tetris, that's incredibly important because a Tetris is worth way more than even a triple. Um, so usually you you score all your points by getting Tetrises. So that's the Tetris rate. Now I want to recalculate this every time we up the Tetris count. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make a setter. And I think I probably, come on. So we're going to make it every time you set the Tetris count. Here, let's make a 
let's make a private variable. Let's increase the Tetris count. We need a getter. Okay. So that's fine, but then we're going to recalculate our Tetris rate. And our Tetris rate is going to be, drum roll please, the number of Tetrises times 400 divided by uh, lines. Why 400? Because it's times four divided by lines, and then you multiply everything by 100. So let's just, instead of multiplying by 4 and then by 100, let's just multiply it by 400 right from the get-go. Um, Tetris count is an integer. 400 is an integer. Lines is an integer. What we need to do is we need to make this a double. And then once one of them is a double, everything becomes a double. But I also want to round this. Math. Let's get this using system to the nearest integral value. No, I don't want the nearest integral value. I want two, two decimal places. Show me what I need to do. Midpoint rounding mode. Oh, you know what we can do? No, that's silly. We'll make Tetris, Tetris rate an integer. That's fine. And then Tetris rate is this. So what this will do is it will, um, right, we will cast this whole thing to an integer. So it'll figure out the double floating point value and then just chop away any decimals, we don't care. Um, that's fine. So this is the game model and this Tetris count, whenever you uh, set it. Oh, uh, no. Tetris count equals value. Huh. Value is what you set it to. And then the Tetris rate is recalculated. So that will save. We'll go into our game analyzer. And what we'll do is we'll take the screenshot, we'll create it. Um, this time we're not going to do this check. What we're going to do is we're going to, now uh, when we start, okay, we don't need last score. When we start to analyze a game, we're gonna make a new game equals new, game model. Okay. Then we're going to set game model, data model. And we're going to What in the world is this? No, no. Okay. Private void set game model. And this will be a Tetris data model. Data model. 
So from the data model, we will we'll do some things here. Um, oh, I need to pass in the current game here. Okay. So game dot score equals data model dot score. Simple enough. Game dot lines equals data model dot lines. Um, what we're going to do though, public actually, no. Ah. How do you go back? I can't remember how to go back. Go back. View. Go back. Alt control minus. Thanks. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say of our previous lines equals game dot lines and then game dot lines equals data model dot lines if previous lines minus game dot lines is equal to four what happens if oops I've got this backwards if your current lines are four more than your previous lines, well, you know, you got a Tetris. So then we're going to say game dot Tetris count. What in the world is this? Tetris, oh man. I installed this extension, which ended up being only for Python, it looks like. It was supposed to be some AI module that Gave me nice predictions on my code and IntelliSense and but but it's it's kind of weird. <sighs> See it's it's called kite. I, I don't even know what it is. Anyway, Tetris count plus plus. We got an extra Tetris. That should automatically update our Tetris rate. Um, okay, set game model. You know what I want to do? Does generate equals and get hash code. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to let me compare game models. And if the data in the game models are the same, then it's going to be treated as equal. Um, I'm not sure how far to go into this, but because this is C-sharp, everything is a pointer to an object on this on the, the heap. Um, and so even though two game objects might have the same data, they're different. You can't go as game model one equal to game model two, even if they contain the same data, that equality is going to be false. Um, and that's because they're different objects they are pointing to different places in memory. What this overriding the equals method does is it says, hey, don't check for object equality based on its address in memory. Check these things. And this goes through all the... Um, the actual data. So I don't care about Tetris count. <sighs> Perfect. So that's going to, that's going to let me do this. If, okay, let me, um, current game 
var last change equals new game model. Set the game model. Um, if last change is not equal to current game, then we will console dot out, uh, not out, console dot console dot write. <laughs> um, and this will be current game to string. Uh, and then last change equals current game. Okay. Actually, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, no, because that's setting it to the actual object. No, I got to be careful here. I really don't want to use a struct. You, you know what? I think what we're going to do... Hmm. Yeah, we're going to get rid of all this. Save that. We're going to get rid of this. We'll... Um, is dirty equals false. Set game model. Actually, out var um, is different. <laughs> I Difference. Ah, change detected. Okay, so that's going to be a Boolean change detected. So this is going to say now we can say if change detected, then right. Okay. So this is an out parameter. You actually don't supply this variable. You actually get it back from the, the method. But now that I'm looking at this, this is a void. Why would I have an out parameter with a void method? Um, I will just make the actual thing return bar change detected equals I don't need to muddy the situation by using out parameters okay so now uh, what we're going to do is change detected equals false okay bar previous score equals game dot score so lines changes and score changes. Those are the only two things that are actually, actually, lines and score are intertwined. You can't have one change without the other. It's actually score. Score can change without lines changing if you're pressing down, but lines can't change unless score changes. So it's actually score which dictates this whole thing. So change detected. What we're going to do is previous score
previous score equals zero. Set game model previous score. Actually, no, no. Thinking on my feet. What I want to do is I want to say previous score equals current game dot score. Take the screenshot. Set the game model. Pass in previous score. Which is the score of the current game. So, game. Oh yeah, I should be able to go game.score not equal to data model dot score. Right. Then I don't need this. Then I don't need this. Game score lines. Var previous lines equals game dot lines. Increase the Tetris rate and then return change detected. Oh, whoa. Okay, so the explanation of this is we can detect a change if the game score, which has not been updated yet, is not equal to the data model score. We're going to save the number of lines. Um, Actually, we can say if change detected, if not change detected, just return false. There's no reason why we have to continue uh, setting everything equal. If the scores match, Nothing happened. And that's not going to be totally true forever. Um, once we start looking at piece counts. Am I still debugging? I'm not debugging. I am. No. Okay. Uh, okay. But for now, this is fine. Uh, we do, yeah, so we don't need previous score. And actually, that means we don't need previous score here, and we don't need previous score here. We need a two string, so let's uh, go to the game model and let's create a two string. Generate. Oh. Okay, I can't generate public override string to string. And we will return score score. This isn't going to be totally 
just going to use slash n for new lines. It'll be okay. Well, what did I use in the um, the data model to string? Oh, yeah, I did use environment new line. Okay, let's let's be consistent. You have to use environment new line because in Windows you, you'd use a um, backslash r backslash n. Uh, in Unix systems, you just use a backslash n. So let's environment.newline. Let's be consistent here. Okay. And then I'll. So I want one for the score, the lines, the Tetris count, and the Tetris rate. Tetris count. This is good. Tetris's. count Tetris rate equals Tetris rate followed by a percentage sign okay that's what happens when we print out a game model let's go back to our analyzer now let's just Let's just eat, eat the exception. Perfect. I think that's going to work. Get the screenshot, get the data model, set the game model by doing all this, a change currently is just when your scores don't match if your scores didn't match write out the entire game model wait for a second before grabbing the new the new screenshot so that i think is good view nope build it let's build this whole thing Build everything. Okay, I should keep my Nintendo on. I don't know why I keep turning it off. Not a network stream. This one, that one, play that. Okay. So now if there's an error, it's not going to print anything. Okay, let's start. Let's run without debugging. I push down. Okay. So we want some Tetrises. Let's get our Tetris rate. There we go. Perfect. You know, that's a little bit unwieldy. Let's stop this. This is.
There we go. Just so we can see some separation, but it looks like it was working. Okay, let's run this. Run without debugging. Right now I have to line this up pretty, pretty exact. Let's go. Here we go. Boom. I have a 100% Tetris rate. Tetris rate should be decreasing now. Hey. My Tetris rate is still at a hundred percent. Right, 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 right. Because I only changed my Tetris rate. Okay. I did. Yeah, that's that's not right. I'm only changing my Tetris rate when I get a Tetris. <laughs> I need to do it whenever I get a line. So private int lines I need to find an extension that automatically um, indents my my braces for me okay set Um, if value minus lines is equal to four, then what's going to happen is Tetris count plus plus. Value um, lines equals value. So Tetris count is not an inner variable anymore, a private variable. It's just a property. It's back to being a property. Forty-five. Uh, okay, so I have Tetris rate and Tetris count. Then what's going to happen is when we're setting the lines, value equals lines. Just just don't do anything. Uh, 
if value is not equal to lines. Okay. Then. Yuck. Okay, so if you're actually setting it to something different, check to see if it was a Tetris. Um, then set it. Now recalculate your Tetris rate. Tetris rate equals. Oh, I, I, okay. <laughs> I deleted it. Lines times 400.0 divided by. Nope, no, 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 no. Tetris is. Tetris count. Tetris count times 400 divided by lines. And we will cast that to an integer. Okay, that's good. Um, so recalculate your Tetris rate if you are setting a new value for your lines. That's what's more important. Because I wasn't getting my Tetris rate set. Let us do this one more time. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm pushing down And now I have a zero Tetris rate. I need some Tetrises. Give me some Tetrises. Where's my long bar? So there's a Tetris. 44% Tetris rate. Fantastic. There's another Tetris. Hmm. I want to get Tetrises. So I have a 92% Tetris rate now. So that's all right. Of course, now my Tetris rate should be decreasing because, yeah, I'm down to 84% Tetris rate. This will increase it to 70. Oh, wait a second. Now it's back up to 93. That should go down now. Went up to 96, that's not right. I don't have a 96% Tetris rate. What's happening? That's not right. Come on. I'm trying to play Tetris and look at my screen at the same time. It's very difficult. Tetris rate goes up. Gotta go up. To 92 percent. 92 percent. Sorry, I paused the game because I'm looking at this. I do not have 10 Tetrises. That is wrong. Ten Tetrises is 40 lines, and I'm only on 30, line 39, which is right. 
How do I get 10 Tetrises? Wait a second. Okay, we'll stop this. The first time I got a Tetris, Oh my goodness, look at that. Lines equals five. Then it went up to nine, and my Tetrises went up two. Oh, whoops. Oh, that's why. Hold on. I'm adding a Tetris here. But also my game analyzer, I'm adding a Tetris here. So this tells me I'm doing too much in too many different places. What I actually need to do is I need to update. Yeah, so what I'm going to, okay. Yes, everything is going to go back into the Tetris data model. Um, hmm. You know what? This is getting a little bit unwieldy. And my issue is, is that I'm actually doing calculations inside the properties of the game model and I thought that was going to be great but then I also need an update method in my game analyzer to do things that the game analyzer requires so I shouldn't be doing the logic in both places that's confusing what I should do is either keep the game model as primitive as I can and do everything in the game analyzer or I make the game model aware of the game analyzer and I don't think I want to do that that seems backwards the game model but we could update it we could have a game model hmm okay what I'm gonna do yeah the game model could be updated with a Tetris data model so public I think that's right. Update with a Tetris data model. So this is a method on a game model. And all of the updating is going to be done in the in here. And we're going to actually make this a Boolean. Um, Then we're going to say if score currently, we're going to say um, change. Actually, it's going to be this whole thing from the game analyzer. Everything here. So the change detective, if the score is not equal to the data model score. Um, previous lines equals lines. We don't need all of these anymore. Um, if lines is not equal previous lines, then Tetris rate equals Tetris count times 400.0 divided by lines. You might think, what are we doing? We're doing this all over again. But all the logic now is contained in this update method. None of these matter anymore. 
we don't care about that. This becomes a, an extremely primitive model with a single update method. We don't need this private variable anymore. See, that looks much more, much better. Our four primitive values, a single update method, and a two string method. Then our game analyzer, uh, we don't need this anymore. This is much better. So the current game equals the new game model. Change detected equals current game dot update the data model we got. That's going to be good. And let's just, while that's building, let's make sure we haven't. Um, so the Tetris count will increase regardless of. Yeah, if we got four lines. And if we got any lines, we'll recalculate the Tetris rate. I think that's good. Okay. And we're going to call it a day here once we let's uh, let our game die. Okay, let's run this one more time. Let's run without debugging. So what I want to see is Tetris rate have some meaningful value. I was twice the Tetris rate before. Oh, heh. Whoops. Um, <laughs> score lines. Yeah, no, let's stop that. Let's run it again. At some point, I want to be able to detect when I'm on a game screen, like actually actively playing, or I'm on the rocket ship screen, or the level select screen, and it'll be able to do make decisions intelligently. So here we go. Should be saying a 100% Tetris rate. Yep. Now it should say less than 100. 66. Good. Should be even less. 44. Excellent. 33. Then I got a Tetris. It should increase. Yeah. 50. Good. So this is excellent. Ugh, what did I do that for? That is not excellent. Now my Tetris rate is really going to suffer. That's good because I want to see some data change. I mean, yeah, that's why that's why this game sucks because I'm trying to not make Tetrises. <laughs> anyway, I got two Tetrises, 25 lines. And that makes sense. So eight out of 25 is 32% exactly. And I know I didn't get three Tetrises because a Tetris is 19,000 and level 15. If I did get three Tetrises, my score would automatically be 57,000 um, and it wasn't. So that's perfect. I think we got it. All right, so that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna move forward. Um, we got our game model and we're going to add to our game model as we go. Right now, we just have score lines, Tetris count, and Tetris rate. I want to add some more stuff to that, obviously. Um, 
long bar count, uh, you know, certain other kinds of things. But we, we can literally play a game of Tetris now and have a Tetris rate uh, be displayed for us. So that's, that's what I wanted to accomplish today. And I think we did it. So thanks for joining me in this... Uh, I can't remember my line. Thanks for joining me and have a nice day and we'll see you next time.